Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to cross the Oresund once again and we're going to go back to Copenhagen in Denmark and revisit a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a good few different styles, but I think it is still fair to say that this brewery is best known for their different New England hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs. Now, the beer that we're going to have a look at today is one of their latest releases through Sistembolaget here in Sweden. It's a sort of sub-style, I guess we could say, that I haven't had too many of from them before. So I have to say, I'm quite curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. So hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to go to the northwest of Copenhagen, to Herlev, and we're going to have a look at another beer from Gamma Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Ball Bearing. It comes in at 4.7% ABV, and this one is a New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, session IPA. So yeah, this beer was released as part of the Lokal Osmoskarig Assortment through Systembolag here in Sweden, for May of 2022, and uh, yeah, I think it's the first session IPA that they've released through System Bolaga, actually, come to think of it. But yeah, this is one of the Danish breweries that I always keep an eye out for when I go over there, and uh, they are definitely worth checking out if you're interested in the Danish craft beer. But yeah, my first kind of lower ABV beer from these guys in quite some time. But yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see how we go. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Gamma Brewing Company before, and we will no doubt add more to that list at some point in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefetch or whatever it is that you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Danish beers that I've reviewed for you and that's being added to very regularly because I go across to Copenhagen often and bring back stuff with me. I love my Danish craft beers and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see in the review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Gamma Brewing once again then. So, Gamma Brewing, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Herlev in the northwest of Copenhagen on Sealand, the easternmost of the main Danish islands. And the company was founded back in 2015 by four friends who were bartenders in the various craft beer bars around the city. But they had often talked together about how it would be cool to have their own brewery, but little did they know it would soon come to fruition. So in the very early days, they took in another co-owner. And so the team at the brewery are Jakob, Anders, Jesper, Koi and Nick. And they all had a little bit of home brewing experience. And two of them had also worked in the Ulsnagern bar in Copenhagen, who actually went on to purchase the former Stronzo Brewery in Gorlose, and it was this that became Ul Collectivit. But one of the co-owners is also a co-owner of the Meg Ulsnagern bar in Aarhus as well. But uh, apparently the guys who formed Gamma were invited to join Ul Collectivit. They got a good deal on a 20 hectolitre tank, and they started up the brewery without having had any experience of running a business for themselves. It went quite well for them, though, needless to say, and they expanded twice uh, within their time at Ul Collectivit, and they were producing a maximum of around 500 hectolitres of beer per year while they were there. But uh, Ul Collectivit has been home to Ulsnagern, Gamma Brewing and Dry and Bitter for the most part, but Ulsnagern also brewed the bad seed beers under contract before they got their own brewery, and Ghost Brewing and Rooster have also brewed at this facility, but they have since moved on. Uh, bad Seed have their own brewery up near uh, Alborg, and uh, I don't know what Rooster are doing, but Ghost Brewing are brewing their beers mainly at Amar Brewing in the south of the city these days. But uh, a little bit later on, in July of 2020, Gamma Brewing announced that they would move to a new brewery in Herlev, and they worked on building this up over the next few months. In February of 2021, they produced their last beers in Gorloza before they moved to their new site in Herlev, and the first new beers were released in March of that year. But as of March 2022, it's just their, their kind of year anniversary of production, uh, actually, of May, we're in May now. We're not in March. Saying the wrong month, but uh, they've been over. They've been in Herlev for about a year now, and they've produced around 190 different kinds of beer 
according to Untapped. And like I said to you earlier, these guys are known mainly for their different New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPAs. Back in the day, they did a very, very nice West Coast IPA, but you get different styles from them every so often. I've seen them release a few sour beers recently. They have an Imperial Stout every so often as well. Uh, I had a Rauch beer from them actually quite recently come to think of it but uh, yeah I always look out for the new gamma beers when I go across to Copenhagen but um, yeah that is all I can really tell you about Gamma Brewing Company for the moment if you want to learn about the a little bit more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um, yeah that is everything that we need to say about the brewery for the moment. Let's get on and actually have a little look at the taste of this beer then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. As you can see, it's kind of similar to what we've seen from Gamma Brewing in the past, but there you can see some nice ball bearings on this one. Looks pretty cool, a Swedish invention actually. So I thought it was interesting that a Danish brewery uh, would, would do this. There's always that little bit of rivalry, rivalry there. But as we said earlier, this one comes in at 4.7% ABV and it is a session IPA. Now the hops in this one are Enigma, Galaxy and Mosaic. We know all of these hops quite well. Enigma from Australia. Um, kind of similar to Nelson Sovine in a lot of ways. I think this is about yeah 15 or 16% alpha acid. It has that lovely big gooseberry note to it but it's also got a little bit of a kind of like a red berry type, type character so that can be really interesting. Galaxy, another Australian hop as well, 14% alpha acid, quite pungent passion fruit but also a big juicy uh, mango and pineapple quality to it. Mosaic, of course, from America, 14% alpha acid, and it gives you that nice kind of juicy tangerine orange sort of thing. But yeah, this beer does contain um, barley malt, wheat malt, and oats, so it's definitely a New England Session IPA, this one. And the main thing with Session IPAs, from what I understand, from a technical perspective, of course, we have pale ales, IPAs, double IPAs, and barley wines. These beers are all related to each other in terms of their... A hop to malt ratio. As you go up the alcohol scale, the hop to malt ratio changes, but they are in essence uh, very, very similar beers. When it comes to a session IPA, um, these are obviously a bit lower in alcohol, but these ones maintain the hop to malt ratio of a regular IPA. They just put less malt in it and maintain that same hop to malt ratio. So there is a, a technical difference between a session IPA and a paleo, because the, uh, the paleo, while it might be the same ABV, as a, as a session IPA, the hot to malt ratio is different. So that is your little bit of technicality when it comes to the session IPA style. But uh, yeah, another little thing to point out in the can there, you can see that little wave big thing. These uh, Gamma Brewing Company is of course named after the Gamma Waves, one of the various forms of uh, radiation. But uh, yeah, this one is a 440 milliliter can. I believe I paid 45 Swedish kroner for this beer. So that is... Um, that is roughly four euros fifty, somewhere in the region of like four pounds sterling, and I guess some maybe close to five dollars American, just for those of you watching, in uh, different parts of the world. Of course, you will pay about ten kroners more for this uh, in Sweden than you would a Swedish equivalent, just because it's an import beer. That seems to be a bit of a kind of unwritten general rule, I would say. But yeah, this is the ball bearing four point seven percent New England session IPA. Let's get this guy out, and we'll get on with the tasting. Then I'm very curious to see. What this is going to have in store for us and it's been a wee while actually since I've had a beer that had uh, Enigma in it so that's something that I'm quite curious to see when it comes to this one and of course I know this brewery is very capable when it comes to the, the New England style but it has also been a while since I've had a session IPA from these guys I've maybe only had one or so from them actually come to think of it I actually thought this beer was a big double IPA when I when I bought this one um, so yeah, I was a wee bit surprised when I pulled it out of the fridge and it was a session IPA. So yeah, good one to start off the evening with, I guess we could say. But anyway, as you can see and as you would expect, this beer has poured a lovely, very bright colour with a lovely big fluffy head. So yeah, before that head disappears, you can see it's got just under a full finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head. There are one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass there, a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there and I would describe that head as being almost perfect white. I'm not sure how well that's going to show up in the light with this camera but uh, yeah you can see it's a per for me that's a perfect white head and you can see lots of very small fluffy bubbles but there are one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass there are a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there 
and overall it does look pretty nice in that sense. There's not too much in the way of visible carbonation, but it looks good. Uh, color wise, I would describe this one as being a very bright yellow sort of mango juice color. I always like comparing the New England IPAs to different fruit juices in terms of their appearance because that's just what they remind me of. But yeah, this one is very much like a big kind of juicy, yeah, a big mango juice color. So remember, the color of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelized, thus you get a darker color of beer. Any barrel aging that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the color of the beer too. But um, otherwise, um, this one, um, otherwise, well, otherwise you don't really need to care so much about what goes into the beer, if that makes sense. But yeah, you don't really need to care about barrel aging and uh, adjuncts when it comes to New England IPAs. One thing I do have to say though is that the level of haze in this one for a 4.7 percenter is pretty impressive. This one's really leaning toward that soupy and gloopy end of the spectrum. So remember, the level of haze in a New England IPA is dependent on the oak content, wheat content, and to a degree the yeast as well. There's no real rule about um, yeah. There's no real rule about um, you know the ABV with this. It varies from the haze in these beers tends to vary from brewery to brewery and even recipe to recipe, of course. But yeah, for a 4.7 percenter, the level of opacity, opaqueness, whatever you want to say in this one. Is pretty damn impressive. But yeah, other than that, I don't think we really need to say anything about the appearance of this beer. So I think we should go on and take a look at the aroma and see what we get out of it. So um, yeah, let's do this then. This looks good for a New England Session IPA. Ooh, that does smell really nice actually. So first impression of this one is it's actually very soft and bready. Um, it's almost got a bit of crispness to it in the malt base as well. And that's one thing I like about Session IPAs. Quite often they do have a wee bit of like, just a kind of almost like, like um, a little bit of a, like a kind of hellish or pilsnery type crispness to them to give them a wee bit of zip, if you like. Because that's, you know, I've found that quite a few Swedish breweries and things have, um, quite a few Swedish breweries and things have done that. So, um, yeah, the way that this goes together, I think, is... Um, it's really nice. Uh, so yeah, this uh, the malt base to me is, is sticking out with this one quite a lot when we first smell it. But yeah, it's got a lovely kind of it's got a lovely kind of pale malty. Um, it just has a lovely kind of zippy pale malt backbone to it. You've got a nice kind of bright green component as well, and some lovely kind of you've got a mix of kind of citrusy and and tropical fruity notes coming out of this one. It smells like a really really nice beer, and again the kind of crispness and zippiness that the beer has is one of the things that distinguishes it as a session IPA for me. But yeah, let's break the aroma down a wee bit more and just describe it for you a little bit more kind of in depth actually. So, on the, um, yeah, on that, on that malty backbone then, so yeah, I get a little bit of a kind of fresh bread, bread crust, you know, out of it, you know, like that fresh hedgehog roll, definitely getting some of that there. You can smell that soft, um, fluffy, white, ready character to it. But toward the back of the nose, I'm getting quite a little bit of wheaty, um, bitiness out of the beer. But I'm also getting some kind of almost lager malt crispness, if that makes sense. There is something almost just a wee bit German lager-like about this beer, which I really like. Um, I remember there was a period where they were putting a little bit of like Pilsner malt in these New England IPAs just to give them a wee bit of crispness and um, this I'm, I'm just smelling something like that in there. I was in Germany quite recently of course drinking like lots of Pilsners and Hellas beers and stuff like that and there is just something about this one that is telling me um, that is telling me there might be a wee bit of Pilsner malt or something like that in this one. Oddly enough on the Untapped usually with Gamma Brewing they give you a whole list of uh, the malt bait, the, the malts and the hops, but there wasn't anything about the malts this time or the yeast that they were using in this beer. But um, yeah, the malty character in this one I think is very nice. Uh, I'm not getting so much in the way of oaty notes to this one. I mean, this beer for me leans towards that kind of wheaty bitey side of things. It's got a bit of the lager malt Christmas and you've got some soft white bready character from the, uh, the barley malt. So that is... For me, that is um, pretty interesting with this one. I like how that how that goes together in this beer. Um, yeah, on top of the that, though, you, you do get a little bit of a smooth kind of oaty character. Um, what do they say? Yeah, you can smell a wee bit of smoothness and a little touch of creaminess from the oats, but I think that really takes a back seat to the barley malt, the lager side, and the more wheaty, bitey character of the beer. So that's an interesting point for me. Um, 
Yeah, but on top of that, I definitely get a little bit of a McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing out of this one. And that's something else that's making me wonder, is there a little touch of Pilsner malt in this beer? Because the, 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 the biscuity notes that you get out of this almost just remind me of, you know, the, the Caseman pills, actually, from, uh, from Bamberg. There's just something really distinctive about this beer. There's something that's setting off my whole um, nostalgia complex, in a way, I guess we could say. Um, so yeah, th there is definitely a lager malty character to this beer in the malt base. Um, yeah, I really like this actually. There's a little touch of that word, those original butter candy, butterscotchy to this, this butterscotchy note to this one. But other than that, I think it's um, it's really it's really quite nice. Um, on the um, on the uh, other than that, um, on, the only other thing I can think to say about the malt base is that it does have a wee bit of a Jacob's cream cracker type note to it, but that takes a little bit of time to come out, in my opinion. But um, yeah, I think that's everything we need to say about the malty side of things. On the hoppy side of the beer, then let's have a look at that. Um, the green component, as I say, really leans towards that bright floral aromatic side of things. There's a little touch of um, there is a little touch of earthiness in there, so a wee bit of earthiness at the back of the nose. Um, as you come further forward, you've got a good little bit of floral aromaticity uh, to this beer. So you get that nice big floral aromatic component to it. Doesn't smell too deep, um, and I think yeah, this is one of these beers that it relies mainly on late addition hopping and dry hopping. So remember, there are three types of hops, er, three types of hoppings that you could do early addition hops within the first um, hour of the wort boil. That gives you mainly bitterness. Um, late addition hopping within the last half hour of the wort boil. Normally IPAs have a wort boil of around 90 minutes, but not always. And then you've got dry hopping, um, which is done after the wort boil is complete, and that gives you exclusively flavour aroma. You get a little touch of bitterness out of late addition hopping, but not all that much. Uh, West Coast IPAs tend to use all three, and hence they're a little bit more bitter, whereas New England IPAs tend to rely mainly on late addition and dry hopping. This beer smells, because of the, lack, the, the kind of brightness and the... It's almost like, I don't, it's, a, it's a little bit like a lack of dankness, if you like. Not that that's a bad thing, but you can smell that the depth of the, the, the green character in this one is quite bright and quite punchy. So I think this beer is relying mainly on late addition hops and uh, and dry hopping for sure, because it's got a nice bright floral aromaticity. You do get a wee bit of zesty, grassy character out of it. And uh, yeah, I think it works quite well. The big zest, zesty grassiness, I think, is coming from Galaxy. I remember Galaxy always giving you quite a big zesty, grassy character. Um, but yeah, it goes together very nicely in that sense. So on the fruity side of things, for me, you can definitely smell, I think the Galaxy has taken the lead in this one. I do get quite a little bit of that more pungent passion fruit, but there's a very, there's a good little bit of a kind of, I get quite a bright pineapple and a little bit of juicy mango out of this one. But yeah, for me, a bit of passion fruit, juicy mango and a wee bit, quite a bright, um, quite a bright pineapple actually. But on the, um, how do we say? Underneath that, you can definitely smell a little bit of that oily kind of gooseberry character from the um, from the Enigma. So quite a wee bit of that in there with this beer. Um, yeah, but you do get the, the interesting thing is the the mosaic. I think um, the mosaic takes a little bit of time to come out, so you can feel the oily like gooseberry from the Enigma, and you get a wee bit of that kind of red, almost like cranberry-ish type note from the Enigma. But this beer, the mosaic, you do get a little bit of the orange, but I actually get quite a little bit of an almost lemony, zesty character out of the aroma of this beer. It's kind of unusual, actually, when you think about the hot profiles in this one. It's not normally what you'd expect from these beers, but I think it might just be the zesty grassiness from the, um, from the galaxy that's given me that. But overall, aroma-wise, this is a really interesting beer. The malt base is a little bit different to, compared to what we've had from Gamma in the past. And I, sus I do suspect there's a little bit of lager malt in this one. So, yeah, let's uh, leave it at that for the aroma. As I always say, take a bit of time to just ponder over the aroma before you get stuck in. But I think we're going to we, we need to taste this one now. So, yeah, this is the Ball Bearing, a New England Session IPA, coming in at 4.7% ABV from Gamma Brewing Company in Herlev in Copenhagen. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skull, cheers. Oh yeah, 
I'm going to say straight away, um, it is, as you'd expect when it's called a Session IPA, it is just really quite a nice light and drinkable beer, this one. You could easily tan a few of these. Um, yeah, as I say, I'm not much of a sessioner these days. Um, other than when I go to Germany, because you kind of have to be. But yeah, I just like tasting different beers. But you could easily session a few of these. For me, I like tasting different IPAs. I'm not the biggest... Uh, I'm not the biggest one in terms of um, just sitting down and, you know, pumping, like, um, necking beers. But this, you could quite easily do that. It's, it's a very, very nicely done session IPA. So it's a big thumbs up from me, actually. So, yeah, let's break this down and describe it for you a wee bit more. But on first impression, it's a very bready, smooth uh, IPA. It's actually quite a bit thicker in the malt base than I was thinking it was going to be from the aroma. Soft tropical character. And the green component's very relaxed as well. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. So, on the... Um, how would we say? I think we have to start with this one. So we'll just go with the middle of the palette, as we always do. As I've said to you before, for me, there are six elements to think about in a New England IPA. You've got the... The kind of yeasty farmhousey character and the rye lean and grainy side of things, those are a bit more prominent in American brewed New England IPAs, but then you've got wheaty bitiness, oaty creaminess, barley malt bread, and also the sweet part to the malt base. And those things are more important in European brewed New England IPAs. I think the ones that we get over here are a bit more akin to the, the kind of trillium wheaty leaning ones and the treehouse oaty leaning beers. Uh, but yeah, this one for me has got a good balance in it. So, middle third of the palette then, you've got a wee bit of a bread crusty base. On top of that you get the fluffy white bread and you can feel the wheat on top of that just kind of densifying the beer, just making that whole bready character thicken out a little bit. And I do like how the beer goes about its business in that particular regard. And it's just, and the thing that's interesting for me with this beer is that whole kind of pilsnery, laggery malt that I was picking up in the aroma, you do actually, you do get a little bit of that in this one, but we'll come to it in a second. So as I say, that middle third of your palate, you can feel the bread crust, you've got the fluffy white bread in there, then the thicker um, wheaty character as well, then on top of that, you can feel the oats, and the oats for me are interesting in this one. As I've always said on the channel, I think oats are a good indicator of how sort of fresh or how old your IPA is. So the malty, the, the kind of malty side of things for me in this beer, uh, the oaty side of things, sorry, in the middle of the palate, you do have a little circle there that's kind of creamy, but then as you move further out from that middle, you get... A little bit more of a kind of dryness uh, to it as well so you get a nice little bit of a kind of dry oaty character in there so i think this beer has been sitting for a little bit and this is one of the problems with import ipas with system Agate. quite often they will sit in the warehouse a wee bit and that affects the freshness and um, yes yeah, system Agate need to be a little bit more flexible i think when it comes to uh, ipas coming in and i think they also have to get a, the importers and system Agate need to be a bit better with their storage of these beers to you know maintain quality that is definitely a thing. But um, yeah, the the multi side of things, you can feel that the OT character just dries out a wee bit as you go out toward the edge of the palette. Uh, in the centre of your palette, though, you've got a little bit of a circle in there, and that's where you get a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit, you know. Um, I do think there is a wee bit of lager malt in this, because the thing is, as you go towards the back of that middle third of your palate, you can feel, especially in that border region between middle and back third of the palate, you can feel there is a little bit of a bready build up there. You've got a bit of a kind of lager malt crispness, if you like. And um, yeah, you can feel that that all goes together really well. So yeah, I do, I do think there is a wee bit of lager malt in this one and that really suits. Um, the session IP actually because it just gives the beer that little bit more drinkability and that's what you want from this sub style actually Def I would say definitely you want that level of drinkability from the session IPA um yeah 
I think other than that, there's not really anything to say about the middle third of the palette. Let's look at the back third of the palette then. So on that back third of the palette, you can feel, you can feel the backbone. The backbone is certainly a little bit more kind of. Um, I would say the backbone is a little bit more bread crusty. Um, on top of that, that you can feel the graininess there. Remember, more grainy bitter flavours come out toward the back of the palate. On top of that, you can feel a taller, slightly more grainy white bready character. Then on top of that layer, you start to get the wheaty bitiness out of the beer. And then the top, the topmost part of that back third of the palate, that's where you're getting the yeasty elements of the beer. So you can feel a slightly more dense white bready character coming out of the beer. And it has a little bit of a crackery element to it. This is where you're you know, I'm getting a little bit of that Jacob's Cream crackery note from the yeasty side of this beer, but you can definitely taste that the, the back third of the palate, the flavour is definitely taller on the back third of the palate. Then as you come further forward, the flavour just densifies. It just comes down a little bit more and densifies into that middle third of the palate. But I like how this one goes together in terms of the malt base. It's, it's got a nice breadiness to it to let you know, yeah, this is an ale and it is a New England IPA, but it also just has that, I think that, I, I heavily suspect there's lager malt or pilsner malt in this beer. Um, the, that is a really nice touch with this one because it just gives you that drinkability. That's the session part of the, the New England IPA, if you like. So yeah, impressed with the malty and yeasty side of things with this one. The other thing I would say about this beer is I'm not sure exactly how old it is, but this one, to me, it comes across as being in, in a little bit better condition, relatively speaking, compared to the other gammas that I've had through Seastonbolaget. The ones when you get gamma fresh straight out of Copenhagen, the shops, you know, Shiosk and uh, and Beerhive and things like that over there. When you get it fresh, gammas unreal. But when, the Seastonbolaget ones, you can you can taste that it's not at its optimum, if you like. But this one, relatively speaking, I think is in better nick, better condition than some of the other ones we've had through since Thimble Laggett. So that's worth noting as well. But let's focus on the hoppy part of this beer. Back corners of the palate, definitely a little touch of earthiness there. I would say that that is most likely to come from Mosaic. I've always found that Mosaic has a little bit of an earthy character to it. But as you move further forward, it develops a little bit of a herbal thing. And then as you move toward the front corners of the palate, it's a little bit more kind of floral. It's got a little bit of a floral brightness to it but yeah the green component is not actually that pungent it's a bit more pungent in the aroma than it is in the flavor to be honest with you around the front curve of the palate you get a little bit of a lighter grassiness but again i think uh, this beer um is a little bit more the, the green component is a little bit more reserved for sure um than, than what you get from the aroma so that is definitely worth noting uh yeah So, on the um, yeah, on the fruity side of things, then let's focus on that front third of the palate. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate. Again, you get a little bit of a bready build up there. You can feel there's a bit more of a bread crusty thing. Then the base of that front third of your palate is a little bit more um, soft and white bready. On top of that, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters come out of the beer and this one is kind of what you would expect from the the hops and that are in this beer i know these hops all fairly well although uh, galaxy and mosaic a little bit more than enigma although i very much like enigma but yeah uh, toward the back of that front third of your palate you get a bit more of a pungent passion fruity sort of thing so i do like that you're a little bit more of a kind of pungent passion fruit as you move further forward um, you can feel you can feel that the base of that front third of your palate actually you can feel that sort of oily gooseberry thing from the Enigma for sure. But yeah, toward the back, right uh, toward the back of that front third of your palate, you get that pungent passion fruit. Then sitting on top of that, there's a juicier mango. And toward the middle of that front third of your palate, there's a wee bit more. There is a wee bit more of um uh, there is a little bit more of a kind of floral. Uh, sorry, there's a wee bit more of a kind of lighter juicy pineapple sort of thing. As you go toward the front, into the front half of that middle third of the palate, you can feel that nice light tangerine orange from, uh, from Mosaic. Absolutely, it's quite bright and juicy in this beer actually. But then underneath, and the further you go into the aftertaste, you start to get a little bit of that, kind of, it's, there's a very slight sort of cranberry-ish note to this beer, and that's Enigma. Enigma's like Nelson Sauvine, but it just has a little bit of a red berry, kind of cranberry-ish type flavour to it. So that comes out a wee bit in the aftertaste, but yeah, the passion fruit lingers there, the mango and pineapple, the orange, and then you've just got the more oily Enigma characteristics sitting there underneath. So the hoppy side of this beer, I think, is, is really 
quite interesting as well. It's a combination that you don't see that often these days, at least in this part of the world. Maybe, you know, you've probably got quite a few Enigma and, and Galaxy uh, and Mosaic beers down in like Australia and, and things like this because, you know, two of them are Australian hops and Mosaic is produced on a huge scale these days. But um, yeah, overall, this is a very, very nice New England Session IPA. And uh, if Gamma can do them like this, uh, like I say, I think I've only had one or two from them in this particular sub-style before. Um, I would certainly be keen to try more of these, but you know, I'm always often tempted, because of the prices of the beer in Denmark, the Session IPAs, the, the singles and the doubles, they don't vary that much in price. So I'm always, you know, it's a bit more bang for your buck. I'm very much like that when I buy the beers. There's only about 10 kroners difference sometimes between the doubles and the, the Sessions. So, you know, I'm always more tempted to go for the doubles because it's just more of a, yeah, as I say, more bang for your buck. But yeah, solid, solid beer, this one. And a thumbs up to uh, to Gamma Brewing, for sure. Uh, but yeah, let's let's round off with the mouthfeel on this beer then. So for me, yeah, middle of the spectrum, mid-bodied, smooth carbonation. It's got a little bit of a wetness to it and a nice kind of smoothness. So a little bit of wetness and smoothness. And uh, yeah, absolutely. You, um, yeah, this beer is, is, as I say, just really, really nice. And you do get a little bit of crispness out of this beer the further into the aftertaste. That is something I should say as well. That kind of pilsnery malty dryness uh, and crispness toward the back of the palate kind of becomes a bit more prominent the further you go into the aftertaste. But yeah, malt base with this one, as I say, lovely and smooth and bready in a lot of sense. There's a bit of dryness in there, just a little touch of sweetness. In terms of IBUs, I think it's a fairly standard 25 or 30 IBU beer for sure. And you've got that nice kind of juicy... Uh, fruity character to this one so um yeah i do like how how this beer goes about its business it gets a big um it does get a big thumbs up from me um yeah enjoy this one my first session ipa from gamma brewing in a long time and this is definitely worth checking out if you get the chance but let's leave it at that for this review i've really enjoyed this one so once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from gamma brewing as well and uh, i'm sure we'll return to these guys in the near future but in the meantime let me know your own thoughts on this beer as i say uh, check out my social media check out gamma brewing social media and i'll catch you guys on the next one this was the ball bearing 4.7% New England Session IPA from Gamma Brewing in Herlev on Sealand, just to the northwest of Copenhagen. Slanget, Skull, cheers, see you guys later.